Today we're talking about what no one tells you about data analytics. The reason winning data analysts stand out so often is because of the quality of their analytics. You might have a great data set, but how do you actually analyze it with insights that keep your stakeholders hooked the entire time? This is an art and it's one of the hardest things to learn when you're just starting out in data analytics. But the good news is there is a right answer. I've analyzed hundreds of data analytics projects across dozens of industries, and they all run the exact same data analytics process. This formula has driven millions in value, and it works every single time. So in this video, I'm going to break it all down in seven simple and essential steps. By the way, I'm Anas, I'm a data scientist and consultant in the UK, and I help people turn data into real impact. Number one is the myth of clean data. When you're just starting in data analytics and you watch all these tutorials and take on all the courses and certifications, usually the tutors, they give you a very clean data set. It's usually a CSV file or an Excel file and it's all clean and sorted and even what you need to analyze look very obvious. But in real life, you'll quickly see that you'll end up working with data that is completely unstructured, that is messy and that a lot of time you'll be spending cleaning that data, processing it and exploring it before doing anything meaningful with it. So a lot of people get trapped in tutorial hell. I've talked about it so many times. It's good to do tutorials and follow them on YouTube. That's really good. But the best thing you can do is to go scrape data for yourself in a project that you're passionate about or go and get some data that is not completely clean and you try to learn the steps to clean it and get it ready to be analyzed. This is a real skill and one that you need to master. So go and eliminate that myth of clean data. Stop only watching tutorials when everything looks perfect with all clean data, highest accuracies, because in real life it's a little bit more complex than that and you want to be aware of it as soon as you can. Number two is domain expertise beats fancy tools. Think about it. If you had experience, let's say in retail, you've spent some time working in a retail shop, you were selling something, or you have your family that do some e-commerce or any form of work in the industry of retail, you have an edge. So you have a domain expertise and you have a domain knowledge. And that domain knowledge, you can easily use it in data analytics because you know what KPIs you're looking for, you know where to get the data from, you know what looks right and what looks off. And this gives you an edge over someone else that doesn't have that domain expertise and domain knowledge. However, lots of people only focus on SQL, Python, Excel, Power BI. The tools are good and they're just tools that you're gonna to use to just turn the data into something meaningful and usable that drives business value. So instead of focusing too much on the tools that you should learn, try to think how you can be more valuable to a business by learning how it works, learning about their KPIs, and therefore, whatever tools you're gonna learn are going to be applicable and relevant in your projects and for the clients you work for or your employer or if you're just passionate about a topic and you want to dive into that one and do analytics in that topic. Number three is stakeholder management. When working on data analytics projects, you'll work with different people, stakeholders, clients, managers, and each one of them, you'll have to communicate with them in a certain way. They're expecting from you certain things. They're looking for certain KPIs. And in order for you to do your job well, you need to learn how to communicate with them. Stakeholders, in most cases, they just want direct results, direct impact. They don't want to listen about what code you use, even what programming language. They honestly don't care as long as you bring the results for them. I remember working for a company and their COO, when I asked him what tools should I use, he said, I don't care as long as I get the results. And this is the kind of thing you're gonna hear a lot when you work, especially as a consultant or a freelancer, when the client has a goal and you're there to fulfill it and they don't care about the tools. But obviously if you work in an environment that already has some tools, you'll have to adapt to the tech stack of the company, which will take you maybe a little bit of time to learn and adapt. But the goal here is that you need to know what value you're going to add and the tools will come later. So knowing how to communicate with stakeholders, listen to them intently to understand what they really want from the analytics so that you can focus on all your energy only on the things that they want, not wasting your time on things that no one wants. Number four 
balancing automation with human judgment. And this is a very important topic and one that I'm kind of passionate about these days. We talk a lot about automating workflows, about AI replacing some jobs, about AI doing our stuff. Yes, there is a truth in here, but it's not the whole truth. Believe me, I work in some analytics project where my input, without it, you will never get the results that you want. And why is that? There are some nuances. Let's say I work on a project where we changed the way we captured the data. We had one system, then we changed to another one, let's say at the beginning of 2025. The AI or any other automated tool wouldn't pick up those nuances. And even if you prompt it, it will pick them up. But who says that they will understand better than you, the person that is exposed to the new system for some time? Human judgment is so important. Yes, there are AI tools that can help you speed up the workflow. And that's why I say to not focus too much on the tools, because nowadays AI can do some really good code. I'm not saying here that you shouldn't learn how to code. I'm just saying that thinking of the business impact and what the stakeholders really want, that's what really matters. The AI tools can help you code, but as long as you can add your own human judgment to it, you'll end up doing amazing things and even faster. So yes, combine automation with human judgment to get the best results. We still don't have tools that can do all your work for you because there's so much complexity in data, data unclean, something is missing, some outliers that only you can understand, and so much more. So don't think that AI will replace what you do. It's here to enhance your work as long as you have good domain knowledge and you have a good technical background as well. Number five, setting realistic KPIs and avoiding vanity metrics. I have a story around this one. One of my first freelance projects, I worked for an HR company based in the UK and I had to analyze a very complex database that they had and they just sent me all their SQL database, a bunch of tables, a few million rows, and the requirements were quite blurry. But since I was a beginner, I was a little bit ashamed and scared to ask too many questions. I didn't want to look like I didn't have any experience because I didn't have. I had barely some experience and I wanted to show that I could do the job and get paid. And it wasn't that much of a pay. I was just starting out in freelancing on Upwork. And when I was given that data, I went and I analyzed a bunch of things and the report was 25 pages long. And he told me, hey Anas, the results are good, but you could have easily summarized this in two pages. And I learned a valuable lesson here. The CEO didn't want me to analyze all the possibilities and things. He only wanted me to define the right user persona that we should advertise for based on the data that we have. And if I only listened to this one sentence, it could have saved me days of work and also would have made my analysis and my report very specific to answer that question from the CEO instead of measuring all the different possibilities in the universe and giving him a 25 useless pages of a report. So always listen to the stakeholder, the client, the manager, and identify the thing that you need to analyze and focus on and do that 100%. And if there is anything else that you find interesting, just add them in the end as a few bullet points and just mention them. You don't have to make a whole report unless it's something that is asked from you. And number six, soft skills matter more than you think. That's something I've mentioned before. I see some people mention it as well. A lot of people get stuck in certification, technical skills. They're important, but soft skills, something that a lot of people just neglect. Data storytelling is a massive, massively important thing in data analytics. Your reports are like a story and the person that is going to read them will start from a problematic, the analytics and the results that you found and what are the conclusions and what can we do from those conclusions. It's like a story and sharpening your storytelling skills is very important. Also active listening with stakeholders in meetings, that's massively important. Imagine just by grasping what the stakeholder wants, it can save you weeks of work. And sometimes just listening well, understanding what KPIs they want, how they want their results to be structured, this already gives you everything you need to get going and to do the work the right way. And finally, in soft skills, you need to be able to translate complex jargon into plain English or whatever language you use. Because a lot of technical people, they lack this. They speak in terms of code, they speak in terms of notebooks, they speak in terms of frameworks, and I use this machine learning model or I use this plot, but no one really cares, especially non-technical people and non-technical stakeholders. 
you need to be able in the end to explain in plain English what you found, your process and summarize things as much as you want. And that's a key skill. So remember to invest in soft skills because that's massively important. If you're interested in learning about the top five data analyst tools that are mostly used in 2025, I made a video that I will link in the description below or you can find it just here. Go give it a watch so that you can have an idea of what technical tools you should also learn as a data analyst because I didn't mention them in this video, you'll find them just here.